Hello, Telecom TV's in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN and NFV World Congress 2018. And I'm talking with Domenico Convertino and Klaus Martini. Klaus is from Deutsche Telekom and Domenico is from HPE. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for talking to us. We're going to be talking basically about Etsy ZSM ISG, to start with at least. Klaus, you are the chair of the Etsy ZSM ISG, so it should be to you the first question goes, which is this. It's a year since this group was formed. Why did Etsy, not just Etsy, but also the greater industry, feel that an ISG for this area was so necessary? Well, I presented last year and the same event in 2017 the idea to form an ISG concerning network and service management about automation. It was more or less a discussion. And finally, we, we moved to Etsy because we got the impressions that give us the best, the best uh, ground to moving forward with the idea. And finally, we got the approval by the board of Etsy in December, started the initiative in January of this year. And I have to say we are really on track. We delivered an, an, uh, an architecture which we can work with. For sure it is a draft version, but coming more or less to the details. And that's, uh, the reason for that was mentioned last time as well, that without automation, we are not able to manage our future networks. And that is uh, common sense, I have to say, in the industry, which is between vendors and uh, between operators. You said you're at the draft point. How has progress been over the 12 months? It's obviously been steady and positive. How do you see things moving forward? Well, I, I, I compare that with a couple of other uh, projects which it was a pleasure to, uh, to be involved on. In, and compared to that one, we are moving faster because of the pressure out there, I have to say. And uh, in Etsy, they are changing a little bit the rules, uh, well supported and accepted by, those, by, uh, by all partners what we are doing there. That makes it so successful. Domenico, over to you. HP is a founding member of the ISG. Why did you feel it was so important to be in on this from the ground floor from the very beginning? Because we share this view that without automation, without more automation, without reducing the TCO operating uh, the network, the infrastructure, it's difficult to figure out a future for this industry. So there is a need there. Uh, we feel uh, the same urgency as uh, many of the service, uh, as, uh, many of the service provider there. And this is probably even helping the acceleration <laughs> of, the, of the work in, inside, the, inside the ISG because uh, we, are, we share the common view that this is absolutely dramatically needed and is even urgent. Fine. And this is a question to both of you, so you can, you can argue over it as much as you like, but it doesn't matter who it goes to. What are the um, key benefits for CSPs when it comes to zero-touch automation? Well, the final benefit will be if we're delivering what we are promising. That means if everything will be automated. And that is a, that is a benefit for the, for, for the industry, not only for SSP, also for the vendors, I think. To make it much simpler to, uh, to deploy future technology, I think that is a huge benefit for that one. And uh, I like to emphasize, of, for sure, we are not on the way to deliver an, a new standard, another standard we like to consider, and that is the target of, uh, of this uh, ISG that, that we are using, but it's already there. That makes it so interesting, not starting from scratch, use what is there and moving forward with a complete new idea, maybe. Domenico, you anything to add to that? It's a way, it's a way to be more agile. Eh? So this is a, a word that is uh, on the mouth of many, of many people today. What is happening is that we are double-clicking to understand uh, how to make this happen, right? To be more agile, more automation we bring in, more flexibility we have in the operation department, more ability the industry has to quickly sell new, uh, new services. Uh, this is uh, factual, eh? so I mean, this is uh, measurable, this is uh, something that is visible inside the organizations. And then there is another point that is uh, quite uh, relevant in my, in my opinion and uh, is related to the skill uh, scarcity that we have in the, in the, in the industry. So the uh, majority of the company in this world are struggling finding the right professional to cover the need that they, they, they have. So he, 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 there, are, there are a number of good reasons <laughs> to go in that direction, I would say, in this moment. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's really the right time. Last, not least, 5G is coming, right? In, uh, is, behind, uh, is behind the door. 
and uh, we need to be ready. We need to start. Uh, we we need to start testing how it's possible to do things differently now in order to be ready for 5G with uh, a level of automation that cannot be compared with what we have uh, today in our operation. I like to emphasize what uh, Dominique mentioned because the service creation process should be much simpler in the future than it is today. And that is a business opportunity for all of us. If you do delivery of services much simpler than it is today, bring it in the responsibility of the customer. I think that is a huge benefit for, for all of us. Okay, thank you. I asked you about the key benefits. What about the key challenges? Well, the key challenge is to bring all the things together. It means all the SDOs and all these open source communities because in the scope is also to talk with open source communities. And uh, it's, uh, if you're talking to kids with different behaviors and different uh, backgrounds and they're growing up in different uh, environments, for sure they, have a, they speak a different language and a different expectation. That makes it so complicated. But finally, uh, I have to say my impression as a chair is that uh, the people are willing to contribute and to uh, talk to each other. To set it up, to get it started, was a bit hard, but now I think we are on track with, with our activity. Domenico. I think the challenge is that uh, at the end of the day, automation is a, is a, is a journey, right? So it's a journey towards a zero touch. The, 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 the challenge is to continuously demonstrate improvement, right? Is, uh, it's not that you have just a milestone, just a deadline, just a finish line. No, no. It's a process. It's an endless process. And it's a continuous improvement process. And it's, a touching, uh, and it's a touching many people, right? So it's uh, even uh, forcing people to change the way they are working, to change the way they are behaving, to change the way they are interacting. So there is this uh, cultural uh, aspect that uh, you know, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a relevant challenge for the success of this initiative, but I would say for the, for the future of the, of the industry, not just for the success of this. Uh, of this. Okay, let's wrap this interview with a last question. How do vendors and CSPs need to work together to make sure automation is an integral component of network transformation? Well, it's simple to say, uh, difficult to do it. Uh, <laughs> it should be more open-minded, or they're open-minded for the time being, but there's a, uh, a question of trust, how we work together, and the, for sure, each of the companies have their, their own strategy in mind, and we can't, uh, cannot ignore that. That is something we have to consider, but it should be really a trust form platform where we work together. That is uh, my hope. Hey, this is a tricky question. Eh? So we have been too nice each other so far. So I have to challenge. Uh, I have to challenge a bit, uh, uh, Klaus. Uh, Klaus on this. So there are a couple of things that I think are uh, are important even for uh, for the future, right? Yeah. So on one side, uh, uh, I would say that there is an aspect uh, uh, related to the financial sustainability for uh, for the for the industry during this transformation journey. That is, uh, that is relevant, right? So all the parties, including the vendors, have to plan, because as I said before, if it is a journey with multiple steps, then you need to plan properly to have financial affordability and fees. And the others, on the other side, we expect uh, our customers to change a lot their mentality, especially on the selection process, especially on procurement. We are still receiving uh, RFP with the three thousands of requirements that we have to check the box if we are compliant, non-compliant, uh, partially compliant, when are you going to be compliant? <laughs> uh, this is not exactly the type of the agility that we figure out for, for the future, right? I understand that, uh, you know, that this is a consolidated way to select, uh, to select vendors, but uh, here we, we need all together to understand that we are entering more in a cooperation and partnership mode, real cooperation and partnership mode. Some of the success stories we have today with customers are really pitched in this way. So we, we, we just uh, defined the journey together with the some principles, and then we have been able to set directions based on the market priority of a certain time. Because this transformation is huge, you know, we are just testing today 5G, right? And 5G will be operational, I don't know, two years from now? I don't know, three years? I don't know. 
So it's important at the moment we set architecture to manage 5G, so on and so forth, we set the principles, right? Yep. And then uh, during this long journey, many things will change. Many things will change. Having a, a box checked now will not make the difference in three years from now. Klaus, say you are, there's a challenge for you. Yeah. <laughs> Partially, I agree with Domenico, <laughs> but only partially. <laughs> For sure, from an operator, I am expecting also that we have to change some, some business processes, uh, how we work together on the business model as well. Yeah. I think it's a long journey to, uh, to do that, uh, and as Domenico said, and that is the part why I'm agreeing, um, it is really a journey, and we are only in the beginning of that journey, and um, it will maybe take really two, three or three, two or three years to coming to an end of this journey, but maybe longer. But uh, the, important, uh, the important thing is that we are started this journey right now and not waiting until 5G is uh, in the door <laughs> and not for the door. <laughs> as far as I understand, what Domenico was saying really was that there's a, a lot of, it's a fairly hidebound and bureaucratically based process that things are going through. Is there any way of cutting through some of that red tape to enable this uh, working together to be more efficient? I think that is uh, what I expect and something will be changed, and, but it depends on an operator. Each operator has their own procurement process, his own history, his own style. Yep. And I think it will be changed over time, that uh, each of these operators have their own approach having come into a new business model. And what, what uh, not only based on ZSM or what we are talking about here, also based on the fact that we are working to a software world instead of hardware world. That implies also a change in the business model. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about licenses and this kind of stuff, and that makes it so difficult, but also so interesting to be involved in this discussion. Fascinating interview. Domenico Convertino and Klaus Martini, thank you both very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you.